guys, Tomboy61, and today we're taking a look at the ZF6, the all new campaign reward chip, another tier seven premium destroyer. We're gonna be going over the commander build, the mod slots, the consumables, talking about the ship, going over a little bit of the history of it, and uh, showing off a fun Kraken game in it. So yeah, we got pretty much everything you would want for it. So to start off, let's go ahead and talk through the commanders. Now I'm gonna go ahead and recommend one of two commanders and this is gonna be all based on your play style. The one who I'm, I'm going to first recommend is Eric Bay. I'm sure you know him well. He is the pretty much prototypical uh, destroyer commander that you run when you're running the German ships. Mainly used for that inspiration because his inspiration uh, increases the concealment of your destroyer, and I'm sure you are very familiar with running him as a as a inspiration on any of your other ones. So using him kind of gives you a free inspiration to use in the other. Now, what is that other inspiration, or what are the inspirations I'm running on Bay? Well, it's my usual Bay build that I run on like Z35 and everything else. We're gonna run William Sims and Jer Jerry Swirsky. Just get that concealment all the way down as a concealment as a destroyer, kind of an important thing. Uh, as far as skills go, I'm gonna be running Observant Rage, which is going to reduce the main battery reload time of the destroyer and improve torpedo detection at the cost of a slower rudder shift time. Look at me now, which is gonna increase that concealment rating. I'm running the new perceptive slot just to help decrease that incoming uh, damage to the destroyer and also increase the uh, incoming torpedo detectability because guys, the ship doesn't have sonar. So every advantage you can get while on torpedoes is what you're gonna want. It does have a fairly slow turret traverse. So twist and track is absolutely a, a option, but both of them give you that directional indicator of the closest ship, which is super important. Next, I'm running Smoke on the Water, which increases the smoke screen deployment time as well as dispersion, and then Unstoppable, which allows you to maneuver even when your engine is knocked. The other one who I recommend, and this is just because uh, much like the French ships, this ship does have a reload booster, and when you have that reload booster, it's fun to have more than one, which is why the Universal Commander Richard Shear is also an excellent choice, I think for this uh, task. Um, for when I'm running it on this ship, I'm running a, a Bay and Sims as the inspirations and then burn it down XXL, look at me now, uh, back in stock, reaching out XXL and fully packed. Though that first one I should probably change off because we'll talk about just how useless the HE shells are on this ship. Next, let's go ahead. Oh, let me switch that back to Bay because that's how all my stats are set up. Uh, Next, let's go ahead and talk the mod slots. In the opening mod slot, I'm running aiming system mod one, though I do see an argument for main battery system mod two because you will notice the slow traverse speed of these turrets. Then I'm running steering gears mod two just to make up for that reduction in uh, steering gears that we got from observant rage. Then concealment mod to once again stamp down on that uh, detectability because it's destroyed and you don't want to get out spotted. It, it really does suck. And then finally, uh, going ahead and boosting that main battery because uh, buff what a ship is strong in and this ship is quite strong in that main battery. Those are the mods. Let's now go through the consumables. So first things first, uh, damage control party, just like every other ship, uh, duration of five seconds and it's gonna reload for 40 seconds. Second slot, you do have the option between two things. One, the usual smoke generation with a duration of 21.2 seconds. Dispersion time of 73.1 seconds and a reload time of 240 seconds with two consumables. Or, is as a unique consumable for this ship, it does have defensive AA. I wouldn't recommend using it because the combined AA of the ship, not exactly impressive. And sure, a 200% boost to not exactly impressive makes it somewhat decent at taking down planes. But uh, to give up smoke for that, I do not think so. You do also have an engine boost with this ship. It's gonna increase max speed of the ship by 8%. Uh, duration on it, it's gonna be 120 seconds with a reload time of 180 seconds. And there are two, uh, two charges of that. And then finally, what makes this ship somewhat unique is it does have a main battery reload booster. Uh, we'll explain why uh, when we talk about the history of this vessel, but main battery reload speed, it's gonna decrease your, re it's gonna cut your reload speed in half. Uh, it's going to last 15 seconds. You get, uh, it's going to take 150 seconds to reload, but by default, you are only going to get one charge. However, like I said, if you're running sheer, 
you get plus one to all of your consumables, and that means you get two of these, and uh, that, my friends, is quite fun. And that is the uh, all of the mods and commanders. Now let's go ahead and get into those stats. So the ZF6 has 18,680 hit points with an armor thickness between seven and 20 millimeters. Let's go ahead and take a look at the armor thickness. Most of the ship has 19 millimeter armor on pretty much all of the hull. And then up in the superstructure, you're looking at 13 millimeters of armor. Nothing too uh, impressive or anything that you wouldn't expect on a destroyer. Nothing, no real weird quirks with this vessel. Torpedo reduction, well, it does not have any torpedo reduction, so you don't have to worry about that. Main battery, it has three one-barreled guns and one double-barreled gun on the nose of the ship. That's 128 millimeters. Firing range of the vessel, 10.8 kilometers with a reload time of 3.2 seconds, giving you a shells per minute of 94 rounds per minute. 180 time on those guns, 20.7 seconds. HE damage is somewhat small at only uh, one at uh, 1450, giving you a DPM of 136,300, which uh, just feels like chip damage, especially once it gets reduced by armor. It's it's real rough. Chance of fire on the shell, 6%. AP damage hits like a truck at 2,950 damage, giving you a DPM of 277,300. AP is the way to go when using this vessel. Torpedoes, well, it has two four-barreled 533 millimeter torpedoes with a reload time of 90 seconds, and it does 18,400 max damage with a detectability range of 1.8 kilometers and a speed on those torpedoes of 75 knots. They are quite quick and a range of eight kilometers. AA, which is supposed to be one of this ship's specialties, well, AA range has a range of 5.2 kilometers. The minimum damage it's gonna be doing is 26 and the max it's going to be doing is 110. And just to put that in perspective, um, one ring of the New Orleans destroyer, or New Orleans class cruiser does more damage than this thing total. So uh, while it was sort of pitched to be an AA uh, destroyer, I would not really recommend using this as such. Max speed of the vessel, 36 knots with a turning radius of 670 meters and a rudder shift time of three and a half seconds. Detectability by sea, 4.9 kilometers. Detectability by air, 2.9 kilometers. And detectability while firing in smoke, 2.6 kilometers. And those are all of the stats of the vessel. As far as the history of the ship, well, initially, historically, basically France was building what is known as the Lahardi class of destroyers. Um, then a certain German invasion occurred. The two vessels were still under construction at about 12 and 14% uh, percent completion. Uh, the Germans, when they found this dockyard with two uncompleted holes, were like, ooh, that's a somewhat built ship. Let's go ahead and start building this uh, out, and we will call it one the ZF-5 and one the ZF-6. And then um, the war kept on going, and they're like, wow, we don't have the resources, do we? And they're like, no, we don't. So they kind of just didn't end up launching them and they never really set sail. But this is the proposed design for a kind of conversion of the Lahardi class to a German destroyer. And this is why probably we see the main battery reload booster on this ship because, well, the hole's French. So I guess we get the French, um, we get the French consumable. I, I, you know, I don't know. War gaming logic's gonna war gaming logic. Anyway, with all that said, let's now go ahead and take a look at a game in the ZF6. So as you can see, we're here on Tears of the Desert, and uh, we're gonna do what all destroyers are supposed to do at the beginning of these capture the objective modes. We're gonna try to win our side and capture this area, specifically the sea cap. We're gonna go ahead and sail on in. Now, uh, if you didn't pick up my drift, the ZF-6 pretty much should only ever be used with AP. The AP damage is so massive and the HE damage is so small and anemic that uh, the overpen damage on the AP is nearly equal to the HE damage on, on things like destroyers. So 
there really isn't a, a reason to switch from AP. Of course, we get out here and we see that a Cleveland is there. We're going to go ahead and fire off one set of torps. He realizes he is spotted and he's going to go ahead and pop his uh, radar. And that's our uh, cue to go ahead and skedaddle on out of here because he can absolutely see us. But not before a Fletcher pops up. He's popping up his smoke and we are going to go ahead and fire at him. Uh, we're going to go ahead and try to get out of range because if we look... Our two teammates have decided that it's not worth it coming down here to support it. They're just going to kind of stay up where we spawned. And uh, this is the moment where we kind of have to decide what we want to do in this match. Because uh, we're still spotted right now. We drop spot right here. And uh, there is no way we are going to win a matchup with a Fletcher and a Cleveland when we have absolutely zero support. What we're going to do is going to kind of turn on around, dip our toe back in the base and then probably head on out to greener pastures because at this point we are only going to throw our life away by staying here at sea. Anyways, back to the ZF6. Uh, this vessel is was very tough for me to play. Um, I was not having a good time with it because I want to play it like many other German destroyers, but sadly... You can't. Uh, sonar is not an option here. That is the defining characteristic of German destroyers is their excellent sonar, and it is absent here. So as far as a play style goes, while you're you're using a German ship and you're in that mindset, you very much have to play this ship more like you would almost a Fletcher just because you have a, a smoke um, and you have decent guns. You just cannot... Uh, uh, rely on having that sonar to be able to push smoke and when you see smoke pop you have to be extremely cautious about going in and pushing in uh, as we can see at this point we've gone ahead and said well we really aren't getting any support at c it looks like there's a decent battle at b there's a udachi we know we can absolutely smash a udachi let's go ahead and push in down here now uh like i said you do almost want to play this ship like a fletcher but uh, broadside cruisers have a uh, are very much more in danger when using this. This ship is fairly large. Uh, the French designs of the French designs of destroyers were fairly large ships, and they were in that weird category where they could be heavy destroyers or light cruisers, as far as like history goes. Um, and ZF6 kind of represents this as well. It is a very heavy, somewhat slow ship. Luckily, you do have that engine boost to be able to help yourself maneuver around the map. One thing to note uh, in this gameplay, I am not using Bay, I'm using Shear. This was actually my first round with Shear and it performed fairly well. So uh, also just, that's another little caveat to take in mind. Anyways, we are finally over in B. We spot the Udachi and uh, it is time to open up and look at the damage this AP does. When you hit those ships and you get the full pens, you, you, get, uh, you get some heavy damage. And there we go, a devastating strike. Something I did not know you could do with destroyer guns, but we did just that right there. Um, you still only getting dev strike medals with uh, with torpedoes from destroyers, but good to know that you can also get them with guns. Algier is uh, broadside to us. We're gonna go ahead and try to start hitting them. As we can do, see, we're doing respectable damage with these AP shells, getting nearly a thousand for every hit. And uh, when you have 95 of those per minute, well, there's not many ships that can stand up to this onslaught of damage when uh, when they are broadside. And we help take out that uh, Algiers fairly quickly and fairly reliably. Um, other things to note when, when we're talking about the ZF-6, it is a very much a ship that you want, uh, much like the Paolo, that you kind of want support for. Um, you can easily kind of trade blows in the opening engagements with another destroyer. And uh, if if they have smoke, you may lose out if their team supports them more than your team supports you, which is nothing new for uh, uh, destroyer players, but it is something to keep in mind. This is this is a, a somewhat tough ship to play. Once again, I think that comes from the fact that uh, the ship doesn't have the usual accoutrement uh, associated with with German ships. I I am one person who believes that like the premiums of a of a country should should kind of represent 
just a little like a little spice onto their usual play style, and it's just it's so off putting for me um, with the ZF6 not to have that sonar. Not saying it's uh, in, uh, incredibly a bad thing because it does get results. Like we'll see right here uh, when you give it its space, when you have the right area, we are absolutely able to deal out damage. We go ahead, drop torpedoes one on each of these torpedoes on the ship. Absolutely devastating and uh, fairly quick reload time. Definitely uh, much more manageable than like the Paolo. Anyways, New Orleans is sailing broadside and we already saw what kind of damage these AP shells can do to a broadside cruiser. And we're just gonna go ahead and start picking away at him. Georgia uh, disappearing on and off, but New Orleans is gonna go ahead and focus our attention, especially now that we just saw that Georgia is turning wide to those torpedoes. And given the large amount of damage that these torpedoes can do, uh, well, we just sunk them right there with two of them doing about 20,000 damage. New Orleans charging our position. We want him to fire because at this point we are working against his smoke fire penalty. He decides to fire. We're starting to see bounces, so we may switch on over to our, a our HE for once, but now he's starting to turn out. And once he turns out, it's not like he has torpedoes to fire at us. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and just keep on hitting him and look at that beautiful damage we're doing just chipping away. Uh, smoke is about to go, but even if he sees us in the last second, he does not have enough uh, health to really mount a challenge anymore. And that is kill number four for us. Uh, B is now, uh, has been secured and A is still up for grabs. We're here for both points and for the win. We know that Cleveland was last spotted down in C we don't have really the ability to stand up to him still. Uh, we are going to need our teammates to go ahead and deal with that set. We didn't have the support to do it. It now looks like they are pushing in on the teammates that spawned down there. Um, so I'm sorry, but they, they decided not to support us in the beginning of the match. We are going to not support them. And we are going to play the team game right now and go for the cap so that we can go ahead and win this game right now so we're gonna go ahead slide in the cap and uh have a little bit of a boring time as we sit down uh and capture this area for the next minute while our friendly battleship goes ahead and pushes in enemy vlad goes ahead and takes out um our the vessel that was chasing him uh but we know that vlad is probably going to be our target to go um this is a good time for me to kind of talk final opinions on the zf6 because uh Guys, guess what? We're going to cap this, and then we're going to go sink that Vlad and get ourselves the Kraken. Uh, guns on the ZF-6, absolutely amazing, assuming you are using AP. Also, you need to get somewhat close. Uh, long range, we do have a fairly high arc on these things, and they do tend to lose effectiveness. What does that mean? Well, at Tier 7, that means you're going to come up against radar cruisers and you're going to come up against sonar cruisers and sonar destroyers and some battleships with sonar like there is a wide array of threats that you are going to need to be aware of because yes you have these amazing guns but they are only effective at medium ranges and those medium ranges or close to medium range i'd say that close to medium range well that is the dominion of other ships that can absolutely blow you out of the water. So you really need to pick your battles accordingly, uh, especially when it comes to guns. Now, as far as the concealment and the torpedoes, torpedoes are excellent and very strong. Eight kilometer, and you can go ahead and get your detectability down to 5.6. You still kind of have to operate in that like danger zone because at eight kilometers, well, you're in the range of most American radar right there. So you do just need to be aware of your surroundings and plan your moves accordingly. This is not a rush in ship. This is a plan your moves, try to understand the battlefield, try to pick your fights and know what territory you're going to be fighting. Um, and if you get caught off guard, you have a get out of jail free card of sorts in that uh, main battery reload booster. It is absolutely enough damage to go ahead and wipe a destroyer off the map. If you get out spotted by a destroyer and he decides not to pop smoke, well, you are going to be able to absolutely destroy him. But if he goes ahead and uh, has you fire on him and then pop smoke and you are now exposed, you can either uh, pop the smoke as well and kind of neutralize and uh, kind of zero out that engagement or 
you you're going to take kind of a, a a bit of a bruise. And anyways, Vlad is now in range. We kind of were searching for him there, and uh, we're gonna go ahead line up these torpedoes, try to get off to the side of him just so that we can uh, uh, get a more appropriate torpedo firing angle off on the Vlad. First set of torpedoes are in. Turn out just a little bit more, just so that we make sure we stay out of the uh, sighting range of him. Fire off the second one. Get our guns ready. Uh, and first torpedo hits him on the nose for 17,000 damage. He goes ahead and starts flooding. Does not repair it. He must have burnt all of his repair parties earlier in the match. We're going to go ahead and reveal our position because uh, nothing really he can do here. He goes down. That gives us the Kraken. And that's going to end the game for us as... Um, the Cleveland is shortly dealt with after. So yeah, guys, that's the ZF6. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments below. And as always, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. See ya.